In this video, I'm talking about the 15 things which I've learned uh, while learning to run in the last six months. So, a full year ago, I was completely bed-bound, couldn't move, couldn't walk, couldn't do anything, couldn't even sit at a chair um, due to sciatica, to uh, a bulging disc in my back. And uh, then, uh, eight months later, I was able to walk a little bit. <coughs> and that's when I had this little guy. Um, and, uh, and then I tried to get my fitness back. Um, since since I was able to walk 600 meters. 600 meters was like my maximum distance before I had to go on all fours and crawl from the park back to the house. So I was in a pretty bad state and I'd lost all my fitness. So since then, um, over the last six months since then, I've relearned how to jog and get my fitness back and how to um, improve my running as much as possible. So since uh, since learning to run again. I've had my fastest 5k, my fastest 10k, my fastest half marathon um, and I'm able to do all that even with um, uh, still injury in my back. Although my my back is a lot better, it's still an injured spine so it's never going to kind of completely go away. But there are many things which I want to talk about, things which I've learnt through my experience of learning how to walk again. So the first one, first thing I would say is the more planning you do before you go for a run, the more motivated and determined you are when you are actually doing it. So if I, um, I'm finishing work and I'm like, oh, I'm a little bit tired, and then I get home and then I go, should I go for a jog? 90% of the time I'll just go, no, can't be bothered. Um, it's only what, a rare time where just kind of a spur of the moment I go, let's go for a jog. But if I in the morning think, I'm definitely going to go for a jog tonight, it looks like it's going to be good weather, I check the weather forecast and... Uh, I make sure that I'm fully planning to go for a jog uh, later on, or even if uh, I think about it earlier the day before, I think tomorrow I'm definitely going for, going for a jog, then I would say 90% of the time I am going to do the jog. So pre-planning massively um, promotes your motivation to do the run. Number two, there's many things to learn with running. Running looks like a pretty simple sport to do, Not not much... Not much thought really needed in it at all. You just put one foot in front of the other and just keep on doing that until you get somewhere. Um, and generally, that is kind of how it works. However, there are there is so much more to it uh, to get the most out of it, to get the most benefits from it, to improve the fastest and all that kind of stuff. That's why there's so many magazines like Runner's World or uh, Triathlon Monthly or wherever all those magazines are. Um, that j- Just the simple act of putting one foot in the other There is a massive amount of research and training and tips that you can get, which uh, will take you a while to sift through for whichever kind of running tips would be the best for yourself. So, for example, um, are you going to be doing it on track? Are you going to be doing it on trails? Are you going to be doing it up hills? Are you going to be doing it just around the park? Um, What type of shoes are you going to have? What type of cadence you have? Your stride length, your foot placement, your uh, shoe uh, requirements, your, your type of clothing that you wear. So you don't get nipple rub um, or, or leg chafage and all that kind of stuff. There's a lot to actually learn um, to get from it. Then also, once you start doing longer runs, you've got lots of physiological um, aspects that you need to think about, like IT bands and hip um, pain and all that kind of stuff. Like wherever you get pains, you think, well, why have I got that pain? So it's not a case of, hey, one foot another is not that difficult. Um, to get good at it, it is difficult. Tip number three, to be able to get to run further is pretty easy. Um, you can increase the amount, the distance that you run fairly quickly, like to the point where you can be doing a half marathon. Uh, you know, uh, I would say the initial, the initial fitness gain is a slow gain, and then once you hit, you, there's kind of a plateau of hey, I can do a consistent run, a constant run of just jog, 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 jog. Then that that ability to do a constant run for, let's say, two kilometres, suddenly becomes three, very quickly becomes four, five, six, seven, next, you know, 20 kilometres of half marathon, 21.1, of of just constant jogging can happen very quickly. And when I say quickly, I mean within from like two to three months of suddenly being able to do a a constant jog. And that is easy. That is an easy thing, but you're still talking about three months worth of... um, of progression, but to be able to increase your speed, that requires a heck of a lot more effort and a lot more dedication and a lot more 
uh, intense training. So if you kind of go, hey, I want to run a, a half marathon, pretty much anyone can do that. So you go down to the park runs every uh, Saturday or Sunday morning, you can see hundreds of people doing it. Many of them really don't look like they're physically fit enough to be able to do it. Yet, very easily, many people can get to the point where they can just plod, plop, plod, plod. And some people's plod will be a little bit faster than others, but generally that's easy. But to be able to get faster, so to increase your, or decrease your time, increase your speed, that is a lot more of an effort. Tip number four, if you're doing long distance runs or, okay, anything more than 20 minutes, wear shorts. Get some running shorts or swimming shorts. Ones with those inner lining massively helps. If you're not a total skinny person and you possibly have thigh rubbish going on, shorts with those inner bits will help a million times. The other option you can get is um, uh, this blo bloody guide. No, body glide, which is like a Vaseline rub, which you can put in between your thighs or over your nipples as well. Um, which I would give that maybe like a, a three out of 10 in comparison to wearing shorts compared to trousers, which I would give a nine out of 10. As with all forms of exercise, sleep cannot be under overestimated, Un cannot be estimated enough. If you have a crap night's sleep, it will make all your training and your performances suck. If you have a, cons a constant week of crap night's sleep, like what some people give you, don't expect to be getting any personal best at all for the rest of that, the week afterwards and all that kind of stuff. Um, sleep is so important. Naps are handy, but a full night's rest is is cannot be stressed enough to get a good one of those. We'll go with that. In terms of warm-up before runs, I've not really noticed much benefit from anything. As long as it, if, I, if I start off slow, I can go as far as I want. Um, if I'm planning on doing like a fastest 1k, fastest 5k, fastest 10k, then my warm-up will not be stretching, will not be foam rolling, it will be doing a smaller, slower run to start off with. And I probably won't do any stretching at all. Maybe that's just me, certain different people have different ideas of what they should do for their uh, warm-up, but for me, no stretching, no lunges, no squats, uh, just doing a little run beforehand or a slow jog at the start if I'm doing a longer run is all the warm-up that I need. However, after I've done a, a big run, a fast run, an intensive run or hill run, foam rolling, so, so important. It uh, it can be a horrible thing to have to do. It can take, um, if you can do it for a consistent like 10 minutes worth of foam rolling, really working your calves, your hamstrings, all the bits around your knees and up to your hips. 10 minutes is 10 minutes of total pain and agony, but as long as you drink lots of water as well afterwards, but the benefits you get from it are um, it just means that you can go and train the next day without any problems whatsoever. Or, or you wake up the next morning just kind of going, I feel okay, compared to kind of going, oh, I had cramp in the middle of the night because I didn't do anything. On the flip side of that, before a run, let's say it's a long one and I'm feeling really excited and I want to do my best, what I will do, I won't do foam rolling, won't do stretching, uh, but what I will do is get a rolling pin and just rub up and down uh, the muscles. However, for me at the moment, it's not really the muscles, it's the IT band. So the IT band is your iliotibial band, which goes from your hip all the way down past your knee. And a lot of time people say, hey, I've got knee pain. I, before a run, sometimes get the uh, a rolling pin out and I rub it up and down the outside of my leg um, and all the way down to the knee and all the way up to the hip to uh, get the blood flow circulating and warming up the IT band, which goes down the side so that hopefully that I get less um, irritation around the knee whenever I go for a longer run. Tip number, I've, I've lost count. Um, the next one, what you eat the day before can be far more influential on your performance, especially in the long runs, than what you eat in that morning. Um, again, a lot of time people will do their long runs on the weekend, on the Saturday, because um, that's the only time that they've got free to be able to do a two, three hour kind of jog. And the amount of calories uh, that you want to consume before you do that isn't too much. You don't want to be having a big big breakfast in the morning before you do that. So what's more important is what you eat the night before, maybe a big bowl of pasta, a big bowl of rice. Um, but not just that, it's the whole day beforehand, making sure you have lots of fruits and vegetables and uh, high in antioxidants um, for your body to be in tip-top form the next day. 
food before you go for a run can be a bit of a hit or miss. If you're something, oh, I love my porridge, that can just stick in your stomach and just kind of make you feel really stodgy and slow and pretty rubbish for a good while. So a lot of times it's just a, a maybe a fruit smoothie, a couple bananas, a couple strawberries, a couple blueberries, a quick drink of that, and then waiting about 20 to 30 minutes before you start a long run. That's probably the most benefit that you can get. Another thing, although um, I see the, the foam rolling definitely benefits, and uh, I would say if, you, if you've got access to a gym where you can go for a hot sauna um, and or a nice jacuzzi or a nice little bath, um, sometimes what I would definitely say is that consistent, repetitive running day in, day out, no matter what you do, can just be massively physically exhausting for you. Certainly if you're in the first stage, let's say the first year um, of training. So for me, if I do three days in a row, I'm destroyed. Uh, I can barely wake up on the fourth day when I'm in work. I have so much coffee, but yet nothing happens. Um, and uh, I would say if you can, if you can do day on, day off, day on, day off, that's probably best. Or if you want to do three days, be prepared to have four days off afterwards, or at least have uh, two days where you expect to be a total zombie. <laughs> so maybe if you're going on holiday and you're going, I'm going to be sitting beside the pool for the next week, do the three days or four days, um, and then you can just be exhausted lying by the pool and get the be most benefit from it there. Additionally, if you are wanting to, or if I am wanting to, um, do like a, a finisher, um, this really comes from the the bodybuilding world of if um, if you're let's say you're working your arms you do all your bicep exercises and all that stuff there might be a finisher exercise where you do it to get the most amount of pump and all that kind of stuff bringing that into into the running world running realm uh, a finisher for me would be doing a barefoot uh, style so with my Vibram five fingers on hill runs at the end of like a three or a four day session. So first day would be a nice gentle jog. Second day would be a faster jog. Third day would be like, can I even jog? Fourth day, I want to lie in my bed. But no, if I go out, stick in my V my five fingers and do some hill runs to really work the calves, build up the Achilles tendon, build up your uh, plantar fascia, uh, fascia in your foot, uh, make you just kind of stronger down there, but it will destroy your calves and you're like, I can't walk for days and I'm so tired. Fantastic way to then go on holiday and just sit beside a pool afterwards. Great move. Another one, if you're doing a long run, if you have a bad start to a long run, that doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be a bad run. So don't go, oh, this first five kilometers has been rubbish. Oh, just, oh, I'm going to give up and go home. The amount of times where I've gone out and the first two, three, four kilometers, I'm going, oh, I'm sweating so much. I'm hungover. I'm really tired. I got no sleep. What am I going to do? And then later on, my, the like 10th, 11th, 12th kilometer, I'm like going, oh, I feel fantastic. And I'm running up a hill and um, can... So never ex think that just because your f your start of a run is bad, you should give up. Start of a run could be bad, the middle could be fantastic, the last bit could be personal best making. So never consider a bad start to be the end of a, of a run. Again, uh, IT band is something that everyone should learn about. It is the band, the eye, the iliotibial, I've said it before, uh, foam rolling on it, uh, rolling pin on it, stretching, there's a couple of different stretches which we'll do another video of in the future. Um, is something which you don't want to irritate your IT band. The problem is your IT band pains or problems that you get are are considered an overuse injury, and the only way to not have that injury is to then stop running for ages, which is for a lot of people like no, can't do that. I really want to keep on running. So the more amount of prehab. Uh, we could call it um, pre-injury prevention um, of doing foam rolling and stretching for your IT band. Uh, the the more likely you're able to to do exercises for a lot or run for a lot longer um, and more consistently. Another thing which I learned um, while learning to run again is the idea that there's a difference between hill runs, hill sprints. Uh, there's lots of different types of running from LSDs to trail running to um, track running and all that kind of stuff. LSD long slow distance running. And um, the difference between hill sprints and hill runs, hill sprints are maybe between 50 to 100 meters and it's all out explosive sprints. Um, hill runs, 
maybe between 100 to 400 meters and you're just trying to increase your pace up to maybe race speed um, for that speed of an uphill um, and they are both both those two options are fantastic for uh, increasing your stamina your strength your power and your cardiovascular performance um, the idea with a, with a hill run is that you can uh, run a little bit faster up the hill and then you can just gently jog afterwards but the hill sprint is a lot steeper it's a lot shorter and you should get to the top and be gasping for breath probably on all fours and not being able to talk or breathe at all. So that way, um, there are two slightly different intensities, but different distances and different cool downs as well. So the other one is, oh, I'll just jog gently. The other one is like, I need to stop and lie down and catch my breath and walk afterwards. Both very, very beneficial for increasing your fitness very quickly. Another one, uh, again about the food, going back here, is that uh, it's quite possible to go and do a half marathon without having any breakfast. Possibly not even taking any water with you. You can forget water, you can forget food. In the morning, you know, if you're going for a jog in the morning, like 9, 10 in the morning, if you haven't had breakfast or if you haven't had any water or if you're not taking water with you, your body is quite able to do a half marathon worth of distance. The only thing about that is that around about the 16, 17 kilometer distance, all you can do is think about food. Because you can't suddenly go, oh my God, I forgot to eat this morning. And then you're just like, oh, I need food so bad. I'm so hungry. Oh, I'm going to eat some chocolate. Oh, I can't wait to get, oh, I'm going to have crisps. I'm going to have dips. I'm going to get, oh, I could have a pizza. Biggest bowl of porridge. All That's all that you end up thinking about. Uh, whenever you, you go for these long runs without any food. There are potential benefits of fasted runs for certainly uh, body com uh, composition, uh, weight loss and all that kind of stuff. Um, but in terms of enjoyment, you, you, you run out of enjoyment very quickly um, and uh, you, you just end up thinking about food and not really enjoying the landscape if you are on like a hill run, trail run kind of thing. On the long runs, if you do enough of them, at one point you may... Poo yourself. It happens to all of us. Yeah, and as I said, running, there is a lot of things to learn about. So you've got to learn about your hill sprints, your hill runs, your LSDs, other things like fart lek, um, tempo runs. Uh, you'll want to learn or you'll need to learn about your uh, body physiology, around about your hips and your knees and your calf muscles and your, your foot placement and any kind of injuries or uh, irritations that you get around there. You're going to have to learn stuff about breathing technique, uh, breathing through your, your, your tummy and through your nose and uh, your intensity levels without having to look at a heart rate monitor and all that kind of stuff, um, your foot strike placement, whether you're forefoot, midfoot or heel striker, um, the types of shoes, trail shoes, trainers, like running shoes or even barefoot shoes, you've got to learn things about what causes nipple rub, the type of t-shirts to wear the, to get rid of the sweat the quickest and the cause the least amount of rubbing on it. Um, and uh, yeah, stride length uh, and all that kind of stuff. So so there is, is not a case of food, one foot in front of the other. That's walking. To learn how to run, to run a long distance, and to run a long distance faster than what you did before, requires A, a lot of effort, and B, a lot of thought, actually. Quite a lot of thought. But hopefully the more thought you put into it in the first six months, the more automatic it becomes in the next six months for you to be able to do it and just enjoy it for what it is. Another tip is be prepared that you can have the inspiration to go running at any point. So uh, although I've said the more you prepare, the more likely you will go and do the actual run afterwards. However, there are a few times where I've kind of gone, oh, it's, it's nine o'clock at night, I'm going to go to bed. And then I've seen an amazing sunset, I'm going, oh, I need to go for a run in the sunset. I need to go. And uh, and then just going for a, a quick run. So being having that, again, you could call it being prepared, having your trainers ready, your running shorts ready, and having your gear ready is, is another kind of thing. Another thing I would say is that you don't need that much gear. Maybe a pair of running trainers, maybe a pair of trail shoes, maybe a pair of Vibram Five Fingers if you want to do some barefoot running. Um, maybe two, three pairs of shorts. For me, I have one pair of running shorts. No, I have two pairs of running shorts and one pair of swimming shorts, which I use. And I use about four different t-shirts throughout the week whenever I'm doing it. Not really much more than that. I've got two running jackets, but usually I'll use one for a month. Um, and, a... and additionally, if you're going hill running, like properly in the hills, walking boots or hiking boots, which I normally use, you can run in them. 
I'm quite surprised with that. I was able to run uphill in my walking boots. Um, that that was a bit of a challenge, but it, it is something that you can do. Don't think, oh, I've gone to these mountains of all I've got is but my walking boots. You can still run in walking boots. And finally, the last thing, um, a lot of people will not understand why you run. I was one of them. I, if I don't understand. I still, at the moment, don't understand why some people do run because some people run like a marathon or do like Iron Man stuff. I don't understand that at all. Uh, only you will ever understand the level of running that you actually do. Um, for example, for me, 10k, happy times. Uh, 15k, like to boast about it. 20k, definitely going to tell people on Facebook. Uh, more than 25k, I'm going to be making sure everyone knows about that and there'll be a video about it at, at the end. Um, but uh, for some other people, they'll be like, hey, I did a half marathon, not even mention it. But th what the thing is, a lot of people that you tell don't care. <laughs> so although you may be proud within yourself and be really like, hey, I did something great, 99% of the people that you tell do not give a flying monkeys uh, about what you've done because uh, nobody, nobody really cares unless they're a runner themselves or they've been running with you or they want to get fit like you um, so be prepared for uh, massive internal achievements and huge non-caring from the people that you tell so just be prepared for that just be internally motivated and just be like I'm proud of myself but be prepared for people to go, oh, you just did a half marathon, that's great. Okay, the dishes need to be done, the the, the rubbish needs to be taken out, and Logan has done a big poo in his nappy, go sort it out. I just did a half marathon, can you have some, like, can I have a massage? Can you, like, rub my legs? Can I go, can I go get, like, a hot sauna and a jacuzzi? No, you can go take the rubbish out. Oh, be prepared, be prepared. So that's what I've learnt in six months of learning to run. Now, an additional other point I feel I should say is that, um, although... We can run far, certainly at the weekends, do our 18, 20, 25 kilometre runs. That still, I would say, is not quite enough to start using um, running as a form of getting lean. So unless you are really being strict with your, um, with your diet, with your ca calorie intake, which is very difficult because the more you run, the more you want to eat. So trying to restrict your calories um, for weight loss is going to be a, a, a real tough sell. Um, and if you're not doing any other forms of uh, sorts of cross training, then long distance running for weight loss, 25 k's. I would say what I'm up to, I'm up to doing about 100 miles a month. That's not nearly enough to be losing proper body weight um, with that. What I would say is that uh, I think, because that works out to 25 miles a week around about, I think that for you to really start becoming one of those skinny, ultra runner kind of people, you need to be doing probably about another 50% on top of that. So around about the 35 miles a week. Uh, not 35 kilometers a week, but 35 miles a week. For you to start becoming, because like, you know, there's a, a phrase of it, you can't out-train a bad diet. I'd say if, you've got, if you're doing 35 miles a, a week, and your diet's okay, you can out-train that. You can become skinny and lean. If you've got a bad diet, you're going to need to up that to about 40, 50 miles a week, and then you'll be pretty much dropping weight. But to get to that level is a whole different ball game. And the other final tip that I would say um, is that to get the best out of this, doing some form of cross-training will be most beneficial. So if you can do some weightlifting, if you can do some bodybuilding, if you can do some... Uh, rock climbing um, or cycling or something like that, cross training um, will have multiple, uh, uh, what do you call it, synergistic benefits, um, confounding benefits, uh, compounding, I think that's what I was meaning, not confounding, compounding benefits. So uh, like if you go to the gym and just lift some weights to get big muscles, that's one benefit. But if you do that while doing loads of running, it's so much more beneficial than just doing some weights. So uh, if you can mix in cross training, uh, you will have benefits far quicker and overall, as in overall benefits for your whole body. Because a lot of time you can become a very good runner, but then you get out of balance with just really strong legs or really strong uh, quads and weak hips or uh, um, weak quads and 
What's the what's the other one? Oh, brain melt. Ugh. Hamstrings. That's what I'm looking for. Uh, <laughs> um, and uh, and you can work on in the gym or through rock climbing, working your upper body, uh, and again uh, working your back as well. Because a lot of running, you barely use your back, and also developing core strength as well can be very beneficial. So. Uh, and, and if you're doing all that, again, that'll really help with your body composition in terms of fat loss and weight loss, um, far more than just adding a little bit more running uh, or distance to your runs. So you go, that's what I've learned in the last six, seven, eight months.